What's up, welcome back to a fresh new video. Today we're taking a look at one of the most popular lenses to use for B-roll and portraits. And we're gonna put the three of these 85 millimeter lenses to the test with the A7S III. of this video, I'm going to be making a decision of which of these three 85 millimeter lenses I'm going to be keeping. We've got the Sigma 85 1.4, which is this guy. We have the Sony Zeiss Battis 85 1.8, and we have the Sony FE 85 1.8. A lot of people say this is the same lens in a different chassis, and I would disagree. And to make this decision, we're gonna be taking a look at autofocus, image quality, build, and we'll sneak price into that build discussion as well. These are not gonna be the most in-depth reviews. There's a lot of other fantastic YouTube videos and channels out there that will go a lot more in-depth, but me being so new on YouTube, I can imagine that if you came across my video, I'm not the first one you came across. So you probably already saw some really in-depth videos of these and now you're like, which one should I get for the A7S III? Or I guess any Sony camera, but I'm talking A7S III, so I'm gonna help you make that decision in my perspective right now. All right, so for the autofocus test, I have a locked off shot and I have the autofocus settings right in the middle. For the sake of keeping this video less than 10 minutes, my videos have been getting a little bit long, so for the sake of keeping this video, at 10 minutes or less, see what I did that I snuck in 10 minutes or less, just in case. But at 10 minutes or less, I'm gonna put all three videos up on screen. I'm gonna tell you which lens is which, and you can take a look at side by side which autofocus you might prefer. You might have to scrub back to rewatch them, but all three videos up on screen for the autofocus performance test right now. Next, we're taking a look at image quality. Uh, now, you wanna know what I think about autofocus. I got conclusions coming at the end. Right now, just think what you think. I'll tell you what I think at the very end. All right, image quality. Setup, very simple. I've got a locked off shot. Again, noticing a theme here. I've got a locked off shot, just taking a photo with all three lenses. White balance is consistent at 5600. And I'm gonna put up on screen the three images here now. And these are all just raw. There's no post-processing done whatsoever. The only thing I did is I just bumped the ISO up by one stop, which is pretty close to the difference of the 1.8 aperture versus the 1.4 aperture, which is in the Sigma, the 1.8 aperture is in the Zeiss and the Sony FE. So it should be pretty close to exposure, but I'm doing zero post-processing. And these are all premium 85 millimeter images. Like these are beautiful, they're sharp, there's creamy buttery bokeh on the back end of that sharpness. These are really, nice shots. I am noticing a bit of a center pin cushion on the Sigma, a little bit more than the other two. And you can notice a little bit of the color shift between each lens. I noticed Sigma tends to come in a little bit warmer. Zeiss comes in with a little more magenta and the Sony FE tends to just be a little bit more blue, but those are all generally pretty easy fixes, whether you're doing photos or video. Last thing we're gonna look at before we draw some conclusions is gonna be the build and overall cost. Now, the Zeiss and the Sigma, these are gonna be pretty similar when it comes to cost. You can find the Zeiss for around $600 used if you wanna buy a used lens, and the Sigmas are pretty hard to find a used one because most people who have them love them, but these come in around $1,200 if you wanna get them new. Sony FE, New is around 500 if you can find a special, but typically between five and 600. You can get these used for between like 350 and 400, but what I would say is the difference of that between new and used is so marginal that I'd probably just get the new one. Now, taking a look at overall build, the Zeiss and the Sigma are the only two that are completely weather sealed, and the Sony FE is weather resistant, which I never trust weather resistant, so I don't love that about this one. When it comes to features though, 
These two are going to lead the pack. This is the Sigma and the Sony FE. They both have a customizable button. They both have an AF-MF switch. And the Sigma is going to be the most bells and whistles because it also is going to have a clickable aperture ring. Zeiss doesn't really have any features to talk about. The only thing is the OLED display, which I never use, and I don't think anybody's excited about an OLED display, especially because the focus wheel is kind of funky. One quick note is these two, the Zeiss and the Sony, are both 67 millimeter threads, so if you also have something like the Sony 21.8 or the 24 1.4 G Master, those are 67 as well, so that can be nice if you have filters for those. All right, let's talk about conclusions. I'm gonna kick one lens out right now, and this might surprise you. I'm gonna be kicking out the Sigma. And the reason I'm kicking this out is because if I was only using this lens for photos, I would keep it because I think it produces beautiful images. I mean, just look at that. The problem is that the pin cushion that this produces in the image, you can't fix that with video and this being a lens series for the a7S III, I'm primarily using this camera for video. I've noticed in a few of my shots that that pin cushion can be really noticeable and it just bugs me as much as I want the 1.4 as much as I love all the features as much as this is just a fantastic fantastic lens that pincushion is going to kick it out of the running for me for video so between these two which one am I going to be keeping Nah, I'm going to be keeping the Zeiss and as much as I would love this to have some of the features that this has with the customizable button AF MF switch major bonus if it had an aperture ring and a 1.4, all those things, I would love to have all of those, but the reason this is gonna win out for me is because of three things. The first one, I like the image it produces a little bit better. It's subtle, and a lot of these things are correctable with the way you wanna color grade, but I like the character, I like this lens. The next thing is gonna be the weather sealing. If I was deciding between these two, that wouldn't be much of a factor because they're both weather sealed. Because of that pin cushion and kicking out that 85.14, this one not being quite as good on the weather sealing perspective, this one being fantastic, in fact, advertised for how good it does weather sealing. I like that a lot. And the last thing, this is a big one. This has OSS, it's stabilized. And when you combine the stabilization of this with both the active and the regular stabilization in the A7S III for handheld B-roll shots, you get something that mimics something like a gimbal. Not quite as good, of course. And I have seen some people saying that they don't like to combine OSS with the active stabilization in the A7S III because it makes some weird like jello-y wobbles. And I haven't really experienced that. In fact, I think it works fantastically. That's the lens I'm keeping. Thanks for sticking around. If this has helped you at all, please give this video a thumbs up. That helps me a tremendous amount. My name is Sean DeWispelaire. This channel is all about the skills behind the art of creativity, photo, video, editing, me being full-time in the fitness space. It's always gonna have a bit of a fitness feel to it. So if that's something that you're into, hit the subscribe button down below and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video. Take care. See ya.